Hello, folks. Well, tonight I'd like to talk a bit about drones. Well, those of you that follow my channel know I've had drones since they were first invented. A lot of videos on them and even made a video to see if the DJI Phantom would actually return to its takeoff position if I shut the transmitter off. And you subscribers know what happened. <laughs> In fact, here you're seeing most of the drones that I have now and some of the ones that I've had before in the fire. There's some pretty unusual ones in here too. Well, as you know, I was in the Marine Corps aviation field and our drones actually look like this model of my Reaper drone. That's what the drones looked like back then. But when multi-rotor aircraft first hit the scene, they were called quadcopters, hexacopters, and octocoppers, all depending on the number of motors it had. Well, somehow, probably after they added cameras to them, someone decided to start calling them drones. Maybe because people were spying with them like the military versions did. Those were just quite simply photo recon birds back then, not missile-equipped versions like today's drones. So let's talk about the FAA's final ruling on drones and then all model aircraft, how it affects us all. I know it's been quite a subject of controversy, and uh, let's take a look at it here, and hopefully I can explain it easy to you. Well, we've got to interrupt this program to bring breaking news that the FAA has just this week delayed the deadlines for this remote ID broadcast system for unmanned aerial systems. The coming rules, though, remain final, so let's talk about it. Well, since these drones are really extremely easy to fly, and... Uh, Everyone just decided to buy one. You know, hey, and you don't have to go to some special flying site anymore because you could just take off about anywhere and if you get in trouble, just hit the return to home switch. And you'll be relatively sure your machine's going to return and land intact at the takeoff location. Oh, wow, what could be better? So everybody is moving forward these things. Well, what happened next was non-members of the AMA who purchased drones not knowing anything about our 400-foot ceiling for line-of-sight flying, they began using them for very high-altitude surveillance or interfering with airport airline approaches, water-dropping helicopters and planes and disaster zones with fires and everything. Well, this really enraged the full-scale pilots, so they began complaining to the FAA that it was a danger to fly with them around, as they really couldn't see them due to the small size and could run into them or ingest one into an engine. Well, I can understand that, and it would be a bad day for both pilots, that's for sure. So it was recognized that since you can't stop technology, just like cars and motorcycles, they need some rules. So the FAA decided to rule on the model airplanes and UASs flooding the NAS, or National Airspace System, as it's formally called, by proposing these new rules in December 2019. Well, the rules were really so very detrimental to our hobby, including the model airplane and helicopter guys, that the AMA, uh, its members and others all stepped in and man major manufacturers to fight back and defend us guys that have been flying model airplanes and not bothering anybody. Well, it's a good thing, too, because thanks to them and their campaign to get folks to write Congress and the FAA, since it was such a terrible bill, they actually backed down. And lucky for us, because here's what they did propose that we really hated. The rules for remote ID, or RID, for all unmanned aircraft was set by the FAA. These rules would absolutely kill the model aviation dead, and that's why we had to fight back. So first of all, what the heck is remote ID, you ask? Well, it's like putting a license plate on a car. It identifies the car so it can be used to catch someone doing something wrong, like driving the getaway vehicle from a bank heist. So think about it as an electronic license plate for your drone or airplane. So most of us have been actually registering to the FAA for quite some time now, getting our number and placing it on our aircraft a little sticker. But all that still has to be done. It must be done every three years for five bucks a year, including these other issues that have to be abided by all by September 2023. So here's what was first proposed. Internet connectivity was required. This means each machine must be able to transmit its data just like a transponder does on a full-size aircraft. That also meant you had to get an app on your phone and pay the app fee every month. 
Your aircraft wouldn't even be able to take off if you had a spotty or no phone service. Well, this proposal is for all new drones in 23 as the transducer is now going to be required to be put in all new drones at the aircraft at the factory. Well, next, they proposed aircraft registration. Not just once, but for every aircraft you own, you'd have to register. And they also proposed the, the 400-foot limit. Well, this, of course, would limit the folks doing drone deliveries, surveying, or other work that needs to go beyond 400 feet. So that was a plan. So there's going to be a high cost for this rule, too. Plus, the amateur build aircraft that need at least 50% build by the modder would also need certification and a transponder. So even a kit, you know, half-built kit. So the modeling community, major manufacturers, and the Academy of Model Aeronautics guys, furious with all this, went to Washington and lobbied for the changes. So the FAA went back and rescinded to all this and came up with this final ruling. Although it's a compromise, it was necessary, uh, or all your older aircraft would be grounded anyway and wouldn't get to fly at all. So here's the final rule, starting with standard remote ID. This is what all manufacturers have to include in their aircraft. It's a transmitter that broadcasts location, takeoff, location, altitude, and it's not going to allow the model to take off if it's not broadcasted. Okay, the proposed internet connection and the use to your phone and everything's all been eliminated. But a broadcast module must be installed to transmit the stuff instead on 2.4 gigahertz. So for older airplanes or aircraft without broadcast module built in, you've got to purchase an external broadcast module to be installed in your aircraft. I'm told this module can actually be moved from aircraft to aircraft since we also fought to get that registration down to only once instead of for all aircraft we own and then that would be a different registration number which would be transmitted by the module along with the serial number of the broadcast module. So uh, now with only one n uh, number to broadcast, that's going to make it a lot simpler. Well, this add-on module won't tell control info. Only the FAA registration number, takeoff location, the altitude, and the serial number of the broadcaster itself. It's also going to broadcast it if it's not working properly. The FAA claims that they will cost between 20 and 50 bucks. I don't know about that, as takeoff location requires a satellite GPS receiver, and I don't know, that's kind of expensive. And this is only for line of sight flying. Well, next we'll all be requesting for FRIAs. That means FAA recognized identification areas. So most of us who fly RC aircraft know that if we want to fly at a place where you can go fly without getting complaints, we usually go to the local flying club. Well, all clubs nowadays require AMA membership to fly there, even if you're not a member with the club. You know, AMA membership includes the magazine every month, plus $2.5 million worth of liability insurance 24-7, no matter where you fly. Well, these FRIAs mean you can fly any model there without the transmittal module on your model. Again, this is for line of sight flying only. You note that these... FRIAs have to be applied for by groups like schools, colleges, education institutions, etc., who are interested in promoting model aviation. So I assume all the flying clubs are going to be applying for this FRIA protection for their club, and that is probably yeah, good so. reason to join one. So if your aircraft weighs under half a pound or about two sticks of butter, you don't have to worry about this and can fly without registering or buying broadcast modules. So within 18 months of the FAA publication, these manufacturers must produce all new aircraft broadcasting these license plate numbers. Remember, offenders can be fined up to $7,000 just like those flying higher than 35 milliwatt of power from their video transmitters who don't have amateur ham licenses when they do get caught. So in a nutshell, this is the bottom line. All unmanned aerial system manufacturers have till September 16, 2022 to have integrated RID modules installed on all their new aircraft. And pilots need to be in compliance with the new rules by the same time by flying aircraft with the RID module installed by the factory or adding an external RID transmitter on older aircraft or by operating in an FAA-recognized identification area 
or Freya. I know this is not great news for the regular model airplane and helicopter folks, but the UAS drone community is probably going to be happy. So at least it's far better than the first FAA proposal where all older aircraft would be grounded. So what you've been seeing here at the last is all the virtual drones on Aerofly RC-8 simulator. I can always fly them anywhere and anytime. Well, you might want to also check out the well-done explanations in the March-April issues of Model Aviation and Model Aircraft News magazines. So I'm going to put links in the video description where you can get your FAA registration taken care of. And when I get one of the first broadcast modules, I'm going to be testing it and showing it to you. So thanks kindly for watching. Please fly safe and have fun doing it. This is the Night Flyer, signing off for now.